What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys today. Starting to do Chelsea daily videos on this channel and to be honest you guys can actually believe me when I say that I'm going to be uploading regularly on this channel because I've actually backed up backed up what my mouth's been saying and there's actually been regular content going on this channel for the last month and a half and I'm actually really proud of myself so if you guys have been enjoying the content that I've been producing on this channel don't forget to like and subscribe please press that subscribe button we don't want to be seeing any red on this channel and I'm going to keep pushing that propaganda as well so if you guys haven't done so already don't forget to press the subscribe button also don't forget to press the bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any new content now Chelsea Daily and there has been a lot of news that's come out over the last 12 hours. Matt Laws reported that Roman Abramovich's spending isn't going to be as carefree as we thought it, it would be and there are going to be some costs to it. And Matt Laws reported that our pursuit of Kai Havertz does mean that in order to strengthen our defence we are going to have to sell before we can buy first and uh, the club are going through a transfer basis of a one in and one out for both left backs and centre backs meaning that it's a guarantee that at least two defenders are going to be leaving in the summer transfer window. And the report also states that this transfer basis isn't solely due to financial reasons, which means that Frank Lampard is looking to try and increase the strength of his squad, and he's trying to improve the depth and the quality of depth as well. And a big way to doing that is clearing the is clearing the team of Deadwood and clearing the team of players that don't fit his philosophy. And there are going to be a lot of players that are leaving in the summer transfer window. In this video though, we're going to be looking at six defenders that could be on their way out of Chelsea. We're going to be ranking up who's going to be the two that are probably out the door. And we're also going to look at some of the other remaining news as well. There's news regarding Willian and a two-year contract deal that has been rejected again. And also talks about Jorginho potentially being up for sale. But we're going to go straight into the video talking about the defenders and we're going to start with the left backs. Now, in this video, we're just going to talk about the defender seasons. We're going to talk about the likelihood of each defender potentially being sold in this summer transfer window. And let's go straight into it. We're going to start off with Marcus Alonso, who, compared to last season, has actually had a pretty good season. He's, I will say overall, he's had a decent season, but compared to last season when he was just being used as a training cone and just being bypassed on multiple occasions, Occasions at left back to the point where he had to be benched for Emerson for the remaining games of last season. He's had a decent performance, he's built himself back up and he's linked up with Tomori well in the early parts of the season and he had some game defining performances as well like we'll talk about Bournemouth away when he scored both goals in the 2-2 draw, Spurs at home where he scored again, he loves a North London derby. Uh, Manchester United in the FA Cup where he had a brilliant performance and Liverpool in the FA Cup where he had a brilliant performance in left back as well. Marcus Alonso does have some good games in him. He's had some decent performances and you can't you can't deny how good he is in terms of his attacking quality in a left wing back position. But when it comes to Marcus Alonso you also have to be honest and there are some Marcus Alonso moments in him as well. He's looked very shaky at left back. He's also had some shaky performances at left wing back. His lack of pace can be exploited and he has a habit of giving up way too early when he's left too much space in behind and this has been exposed on a counter attack. Look at that third goal against West Ham when we lost 3-2 to them as an example. Marcus Alonso does have this habit of giving up when it looks like the, he's made too big of a mistake and you see it when he's just barely jogging back on counter attacks I do feel like that is the mentality that we need to try and push ourselves away from but I will say only because of experience and because of his quality at, in left wing back I do think that saves his position at Chelsea. I think he makes the team a bit more versatile. We can play five at the back and it would be better off for us. And a big reason for that is Marcus Alonso and what he can offer going forward. He does have his deficiencies, but I would say if we could potentially get in two left backs, which looks very unlikely, then I'd want to see both left backs go. But as of right now, Marcus Alonso, I think we should keep him. Moving on to Emerson. Not really been impressive since he's joined Chelsea. He he started becoming our starting left back towards the back end of last season under Maurizio Sarri, but it was only really because Marcus Alonso was playing bottom tier performances week in and week out. I'll be real, Emerson weren't really that much better either. He started this season brilliantly, to be honest. I will give him credit for that. And I think who scored had him rated as the best, the highest rated left back for the first month of the season. But then he got an injury around October time and when he came back into the team, it just wasn't the same Emerson. He just 
didn't look any good going forward. He looked like he'd lost confidence. And that confidence hasn't looked to have regained itself pre-lockdown or post-lockdown. And I think with Emerson, writing's basically on the wall. I think he knows he's on his way out. Lampard's barely even playing him at this point. We haven't seen him since the Leicester City game in the FA Cup, I think. And that was like a month ago. So I think Emerson's gone. So I'd sell him. Moving on to the centre-backs now. I will say as well, there are a couple of omissions. Reese James, we're not going to talk about. He's not getting sold. As for Equator, he's not getting sold. Uh, Fikayo Tomori as well. I don't think he's going to be sold. I think, if anything, he's going to be loaned out. Sorry, there's something in my eye. But if anything, I think Fikayo Tomori is more going to be loaned out. But I don't think he's going to be sold. I think he's too young and he hasn't had enough time in the Chelsea squad to be deemed a success or a failure. So I don't think he's going to be sold. But let's go straight into centre backs. So we'll start with Kurt Zuma. Kurt Zuma did struggle in the FA Cup final but I do think Rudiger's worth showing put more pressure on him and I do also think he struggled from a little bit of being overhyped but let's be real everyone was getting overhyped that Crystal Palace tackle I might have been a victim of it as well but I think we fall into that trap with our centre-backs where I don't think any of them have been that consistent for us this season. I think whenever two or three of them have been playing, after a while everyone's looking for the one that hasn't been played to come back just because of recency bias. All players that all of our centre backs have had decent runs of form, but they've also had runs of form where they've looked terrible. Tomori looked like our best defender for a period of time. So did Kurt Zuma. Rudiger, everyone was calling for him to come back and he hasn't really looked off the pace. And Andreas Christensen's had some decent performances as well, but I think, in, and this is in the case of Kurt Zuma as well, we overhyped him a little bit too much. But that's not to say that he isn't a quality defender because he is a quality defender. And he's looking like a lot more like the monster that he was threatening to be in 15-16 before he had that injury against Manchester United. He's, a, he's fast. He's our, probably our best aerial threat defensively and going forward. His jumping is mad. His recovery tackles have improved as well. And on the ball, he's decent. I'm not going to say he's great or nothing, but he's decent. He can do a job on the ball. He's not the worst player we have on the ball defensively. So... When it comes to Kurt Zuma, I do think we could do with a centre back with more experience next to him, but Kurt Zuma definitely has to stay in this lineup for me. Um, moving on to the other two centre backs, so that just leaves Andreas Christensen and Antonio Rudiger, and we're going to go through both of them at the same time because. I'm struggling to even figure out between these two which ones I would be sold. We'll start with Andreas Christensen, and I do think time is running out for him. He is still Chelsea youth, but we're nearing that point with Andreas Christensen where it's like, are you still Chelsea youth, or do we have to look at you as like an adult now? Like, look at it like Loftus Cheek, and I don't even think Lampard speaks about him the same way that he speaks about the rest of the other youth players because he's 24 years old. Bar the, forget about all the injuries and everything like that. He's still a decent player and he's still a player with a lot of experience. And the same comes for Christensen. And I just don't think he's taken enough of his chances. He had a decent link up with Rudiger at the start of the, at the start of the turn of the year, but at the start of the season he lost his lineup to Fakayo. To, he lost his place in the starting eleven to Tomori, and he never really got it back since until the turn of the new year with the Rudiger Christensen partnership, which looked decent. And I will say that mask performs miracles to anyone who wears it in a Chelsea shirt because Christensen was having amazing performances in that mask, and I seriously think it's becoming more than a myth. But we come out of lockdown, and it's the same Rudiger and Christensen partnership, but they both look shaky as hell. And it's weird because the next game was Manchester City, and they both probably had the best performances of the season straight after that. But it's been a lack of consistency with both of them. Rudiger as well, the guy was injured for most of the first half of the season, but everyone was saying he was going to come back and be that commanding veteran that we needed, who was going to calm down the back line that wasn't really looking all that solid at the start of the season. But he came in, and he's more or less made things worse. That partnership with Christensen, I did say it's been good pre-lockdown. Post-lockdown, bar the Manchester City game, neither of them have looked all that. Rudiger at his best has looked more relaxed than some other games where he's looked a lot worse. But there still looks like there's a mistake in him. And Andreas Christensen has simply never recovered that form from the Manchester City game and hasn't looked near, nearly like being that player since. West Ham, both of them were shocking to be honest. And I think Rudiger's performance just kind of overshadows how bad Christensen was in that game as well. So I'm not really sure which one to pick with these two. I feel both haven't, both leave a lot to be desired, but... 
I think Chelsea Youth wins it in this one. I think Rudiger would be the one that has to be sold. He's the older centre-back of the lot. Doesn't really offer the experience that you want to see in a centre-back. And I think with Christensen, it will be like last chance saloon for him. Like this season or bust for him. But I think he'll still end up with a Chelsea contract out of those three. Those are my decisions on who I think will be sold in the summer for our defenders. Let me know if you agree or disagree down in the comment section below. Jorginho has also apparently been put up for sale by Frank Lampard as we're trying to raise funds for other transfers. And it's a shame if Jorginho goes and it's looking like it's going to happen regardless. But like I said earlier in the video, if we're looking at trying to increase the strength and depth of the Chelsea squad, Jorginho is going to have to be one of those players that has to leave. And I've backed Jorginho for a long time, but... I think Lampard's system is something completely different to what Sarri's system is. And Jorginho does fit a role there. I do think he can come on and slow games down and when games are in our favour, come on and frustrate the opposition a bit more, play time out and play the smart ball, like play the John Obi Mikel role. But you can get 60 million for him. And I think a player of that quality who could do so much more on another side, like Maurizio Sarri and Juventus obviously and other Italian sides like that I do think for that sort of price tag you'd be stupid to say no because other than that he's just really going to be on the bench his Chelsea career was more or less saved with Billy Gilmore being out till Christmas but if Frank Lampard already wants to get rid of him then that's basically done a new goalkeeper is also apparently on the cards regardless of whether Kepa stays or goes with Oblak or Tostegan as potential replacement. I think Tostegan is a bit far-fetched but like I said in my previous Oblak video a couple weeks ago, I do think the right cards are in the right place that we could push for Jan Oblak. There is a 120 million release clause. Madrid are struggling for cash right now as they're paying off their new stadium in the Jao Felix transfer. But there is potential there. If you really have the balls for it, we could go for it. So I'm interested to see what happens with that. Willian, that's also the other big news coming out from Chelsea today. Another two-year deal has been rejected by Willian. And it looks like it's going to be time. Seven years and it looks like Willian's probably going to be on his way out. He's been a great servant for the club. But I will be honest, and I've said it for a long time, we should have got rid of Willian years ago. It's the end of an era for Willian if he does leave. And all I can say is best of luck. He has been a great servant to the club. I'm not going to hold any disrespect to him on his way out. I do think it's the best move for both parties. I will just leave it at that. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. Take care and peace.